In this video I'll be going over engine management for the i16. I'm going to put the game in active pause. Okay, so for engine management, first we have these two black levers on the right. The top one is the motor cowl flaps lever. Basically there are some flap, there are like some cutouts on the front of the engine. So whenever you pull this back, it closes the cutouts. You can see here's the cutouts closed. If I put it, if I push it forward, you can see the cutouts are open now. So basically that controls the temperature of the engine. You can look at the temperature of the engine right here. Uh, it says cylinder head temperature. So basically you just don't want it to be on the red lines. So like for example if it gets too hot you would want to push the lever forward to open it. Or if it gets too cold you can pull the lever back to heat it up a little bit. So now we have this bottom lever. It's the exact same thing but it's for the oil temperature forward for colder, backwards for hotter. And you can look at the gauge of the oil temperature here. It doesn't have any red bands, but as far as I can able to find online, you wanna keep it below around 75 degrees or at most 85. So now I'm going to go over the throttle and the RPM lever because these kind of go together. So the RPM lever is this bottom black lever here. This controls the speed of the engine. And the throttle lever is this one here with the wooden handle. This controls how much gas and air is going in the engine. So basically the RPM is kind of like the speed of the engine, and the throttle is like the power behind it. So if you want to go faster, you push the RPM forward and the throttle forward. And if you want to slow down, you pull the throttle back and pull the RPM back. You can read the engine RPM right here. If I pull the RPM lever back, you can see the RPM decrease. If I push it forward, you can see it increase. The manifold pressure is this gauge right here. If I push the throttle forward, you can see it goes up. If I pull it back, you can see it goes down. So you might be wondering, when I'm flying around, what should I have my RPM and my throttle at? Well, whenever you're taking off and landing, you always want the RPM lever to be all the way forward. And then when you're taking off and landing, for takeoff, you can just have your throttle about three quarters of the way forward. And for landing, you just adjust your throttle based on how fast you need to go. If you're just cruising around and you want to save as much fuel as you can, you want to have the manifold pressure at around 500. And you can have the RPM at around 1800. If you want to fly on the highest power you can without needing to worry about the engine being damaged, the RPM for that is 2200. And for the manifold pressure, it doesn't say in the manual, but I would guess around 750. And for emergency power, the highest it can go is around 2300 RPM and around 900 manifold pressure. Um, and this is fine, but you can only do it for five minutes at a time, because if you just cruise around on the max, then it could make your engine get damaged. So that was the throttle and the RPM. Now is the war emergency power. This is the black one right above the RPM lever here. So if you are in an emergency and you need to go as fast as possible, basically you can just take this lever and push it forward and it will give you an extra boost. It'll just give you everything the engine can do, but only for a limited amount of time. You don't want to cruise around like this or it will damage your engine. Next is the supercharger. So the supercharger is basically a thing in the plane that increases the pressure of the air in the engine. You control it with this lever here. There's um, two stages, stage one, two, and there's also an off position. So if the red lever is in the middle, that is the off position, there's no supercharger, and the pressure of the air in the engine is just based on the pressure of the air in the atmosphere around you. If you pull it back, that goes into stage one. Then when I pop it into stage one, you can see the manifold pressure just boosted up. It's around 680, 690 right now. There's also stage two. And if you put it into stage two, it doesn't really do anything because we're at a low altitude. But basically the point of stage two is if you're at a high altitude where the air is really thin, then you're gonna need stage two to increase the pressure to be able to keep up. According to the manual, um, from the ground up to 3000 meters, you wanna be in stage one. And 3000 meters and above, you wanna be in stage two. Since I'm flying around kind of low, I'm just gonna keep it in stage one. Thanks for checking out this tutorial, and I'll see you later.